Hi, this is Coach World TV. I'm Laurie Lawson, and tonight my guest is Barney Feinberg. How you doing, Barney? I'm good, Laurie. How are you? Good. I have to tell you, we've been we've been plotting this for what six, seven months now. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> the original time was way early in the in the year, but we decided that the new studio is so cool that we're glad we we got delayed. So, let me tell you a little bit about Barney. He is a chemistry. Factor, executive coach. I get a point if I get all this right. Chemistry factor, executive <laughs> coach, and I recruiter. forgot. Recruiter. Okay, one word. All right. <laughs> and he's going to tell us exactly what that is, right? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. First, what we want to know is, um, I guess, how did you get here? It's like, what you doing here? <laughs> what am I doing here? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, it all started. <laughs> <laughs> I was born. <laughs> yeah, a long time. No, yeah. <laughs> actually, uh, what it all began when I started recruiting. Mm. Uh, an executive recruiter, uh, helping people make very important decisions in their career. And I felt that I could do more. So I came across coaching. Coaching was such a perfect synergy to executive recruiting. Now, how long ago was this? Wow. Well, I've been co uh, recruiting for about 20 years. And when I bought this company in 1999, mm. that was when I was going to make that transition. So 1999. Now, you said that you, you say, OK, you could do better. What do you mean you could do better? Better. Uh, you <laughs> define know, Define better. I'll define better. <laughs> I'll, I'll define it with one word. OK. Better. Chemistry. No. <laughs> Ah, are we surprised? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Chemistry, okay. Chemistry, yeah. um, I find that the most important factor when hiring or taking a job is chemistry. And most people do not know how to focus on it. They trust their gut, mm -hmm. okay? But that's very nonlinear. And I help them make it a more linear understanding, understanding what's causing that gut. Now, if I asked you to define chemistry, yeah. what would you tell me? Well, simply, <laughs> it's the interaction of two people and what occurs from that interaction. So with the chemistry factor, we have come to the, the bottom line of what causes that. At least I, I believe this to be the case. Uh, I believe it's the interaction of our values. Okay. When we are honoring a value that is being honored back, the chemistry is pretty good. If I'm a collaborator and you're a collaborator and we're collaborating together, <laughs> we're motivated. <laughs> okay. you know, we're energized. We got collaboration going on. Yeah. Exactly. But if I'm in collaboration and you're in independence, <laughs> we may not be working that well together. Uh, gosh, come on, you gotta be a collaborator. No. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing my own thing, I'll get you later, yeah. <laughs> so what I do is I help people understand how that works. And I've set up the chemistry factor process, which is a five-step program, mm -hmm. which begins, gee, here's, here's something most coaches wouldn't know, right? <laughs> understanding yourself. <laughs> uh, and yeah, th we know it, and it's the most difficult thing to do, yes. Yeah. And it's a constant process. It's a constant <laughs> it's, yes. process. So that's where it begins. Okay. And I do it through values. Well, let me ask you something. Can, does everybody have chemistry? Can chemistry be created if they don't have chemistry? Or Absolutely. Really? Yes. I did not think he was going to say that. Okay. Chemistry can be created with anybody between two people. I mean, come on, you know, you look at any situation in the world. Let's, we'll go to an extreme like a war, you know. Eventually, <laughs> there's a peace treaty. There's a Okay. <laughs> You're going to eventually be able to connect. And that's really what it comes down to is authentic connection. Okay. Authentic connection is what creates good chemistry. Okay. So you, you mentioned values. Yes. I think I know what values are. Give me some examples. Do we have like five, ten, fifteen? Oh, we've probably got a hundred. <laughs> wow. 
Yeah, <laughs> That's we, hard we, to keep track of. <laughs> we, we have a hundred. Well, you're not going to keep track of them all. But the truth is, mm -hmm. if I ask people what their values are, if they give me three or four, that's a lot. I mean, unless you're really self-aware, maybe you'll get to eight, nine, or ten. Mm. But if you knew that there were 25, 35, 40 values that you could actually identify for yourself, mm -hmm. that gives you so many more options to connect with people. Because if you know what the values are that you have in common with them, mm -hmm. you can actually choose to honor them together. Okay. So I, I walk in and you, <laughs> you're going to tell me how to do chemistry, but I don't know what my values are. So we sit down what do and we, we do? talk. We talk. Uh, I usually open it up with a question. Mm -hmm. What makes you successful at what you do? Hmm, okay. Do I have to answer? <laughs> you don't have to. Uh, in For fact, purposes most of this show, perhaps oh. I should, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, most people will give me an answer, okay? They'll give mm -hmm. me one, two. They usually, when it comes to business and, mm -hmm. and interviewing, they'll, they'll go to, well, I'm really good at what I do, you know, and, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, you know I, I'm very dedicated to excellence, okay? Mm -hmm. And that, of course, is, you know, the, the number one answer, because everybody wants that. <laughs> Dedicated, okay. So they but, know that, that's the lingo, yes. Yeah, but there are so many more. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, acknowledgement is a value. Okay, okay. yeah, definitely. Mentoring is a value. Mentoring is a value. Collaboration, camaraderie. I mean, we can go on and on and on. Uh, I, I love this one, you know, full self-expression. And people look at me, well, what does that mean? I said, well, if you're in a room with people, wouldn't you like to be encouraged to be fully self-expressed? And some people will say, absolutely. I'll say, and what if you're not? Well, then I feel a little uncomfortable. <laughs> exactly. It's like who's <laughs> sitting at the table and who's asking the questions. And uh, I, was at a me I was at the ICF meeting with <laughs> Barney, and he immediately stood up and asked a question about risks that created this whole um, panel discussion. But it was, you know, and I'm going, hmm, would I do that? I don't know. I guess if I was really curious. But he stimulated the conversation. So obviously that's a value of his. Well, yeah, express absolutely. risk. Absolutely. And the whole thing is, is when you know the values that are important to you, it's so much easier to know what you want. So someone comes to you, and are they looking, are they looking for a job? Are they looking for, what are they looking for? You know, that's a good question. I know they're not looking for total awareness of themselves. They that's what they get. No it's that's a bonus, that's I'm sure. That's what they get. Yeah. They yeah. get the chemistry factor process. And whether they go on an interview or not, they thank me. <laughs> good. Okay. Absolutely, they thank me because it opens their eyes up to what's, if they're unhappy at work, what's actually bothering them. Mm -hmm. And once they know specifically, it's much easier to dress than to just have this malaise of, I'm just not happy here. I just hate getting up in the morning and going to work. Oh, yeah. yeah. And once they understand those, thing, those values that are not being honored, they can turn around and look at some of the values that could be. I mean, very few companies are not going to honor dedication to excellence, <laughs> <laughs> as an example. Unless they're looking for bankruptcy. I don't know. But well, yeah, yeah. That, that we won't go there. <laughs> well, okay, yeah. That's probably not correct. So it, it, I, I, need for, I need more clarification. It's like, okay, so somebody comes in and they go, I'm just not happy, and I hate working with this person. Okay. They what, don't so do what that. do they do? They don't understand, do that. Understand. I hate my boss. I know they do well, that. Most of the time, people come in my <laughs> office. Mm -hmm. And it's because I've searched them out. Okay. okay. They're not necessarily telling me they're unhappy to begin with. They're curious. Oh, a recruiter called me? Actually, they're there. So there's something that yeah, gives you yeah, a clue. Oh, yeah, there's something going on. <laughs> yeah. And we talk. And, you know, the first thing that comes out is I'm not paid enough. You know, I'm not being recognized. Mm -hmm. And that's a value, recognition. Right. Okay? right. And by the time we finish, it turns out that, that's not it at all. <laughs> it, it's something totally different. Uh, it, it, it could be lack of collaboration. Uh, I use that mm -hmm. a lot. But it, it could be just about any value you can imagine. And once they understand that, I then encourage them to reframe. Reframe the value that circumstance is not honoring to a value that could. Because I want them to be happy at work. Give us an example of, of a reframe. Well, if, 
for example, they're doing a job and they're being micromanaged. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, to me, that could be a value of lack of trust. They, they're not right. being trusted to do their work or they want more independence, independence is not being honored. Whatever the value is, it's frustrating. Thank God it's Friday, Monday morning blues, Wednesday <laughs> hump day. All of this stuff comes from people who throughout the course of the day have a value that's not being honored while they're doing their work. And they're frustrated, they're upset, they're angry. And it drains their energy. But when they become authentically connected with somebody, mm -hmm. where they can reframe that value that's missing to one that is present with the person they're working with, suddenly they can be energized and motivated again. What would be a reframe? Well, as is an example, if, if you know that that person who's a micromanager is totally dedicated to excellence, and you stand in dedication to excellence with them, and you continually do this. This is a practice. It's not like a one and done. This is something to do over time. Then suddenly, they stop micromanaging you because they say, wow, this person really gets me. I trust them. Ah, uh -huh. okay. You know, it's got nothing to do with the individual. It's got to do with the person that they're talking to. And when you reframe how you're with them, suddenly it's like, whoa, I'm more comfortable now. I know you're familiar with quantum physics. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. A little. Are you familiar, you're familiar with the movie What the Bleep? Yes, yes. What the Bleep do we know? Well, that, that's all about quantum physics. And if I was to, you know, give it the essence that I believe it, it tries to exude is that who we're being mm -hmm. is the energy we, we attract to ourselves. If we're being mm -hmm. that somebody is wrong, that's the energy that's going to come back. But if we take that away and we find something where we have in common and we can work from that place, suddenly the world changes. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what, what I do. Well, in the process of reframing, would, would I, with the micromanaging manager, <laughs> Um, would I reframe that to be a value? Would, would, is it necessary for me to reframe it? What you would do mm -hmm. is first notice what's got you stuck. Ah, that, you know, it, it's interesting you say that because I, I sometimes I do mentor coaching and I tell my mentees, it's like your client's going to call you and then go, this is my problem. And you're, in my head, I always go, I know you think that's your problem. Let's find out what it really is. Right. So, okay, I'm walking in and I'm not happy. But first, you're telling me the one thing I have to do is find out what's, what's hitting my button, what's, yeah. what's doing this. Name yeah. the value that's not being honored. Mm, and okay. once you realize that's the value, well, you've only got 99 others you can go to. <laughs> True. <laughs> you know? I, I, I mean, Einstein said it for me best. Definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. Well, if you keep going to lack of trust with that micromanager, mm -hmm. you're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I understand that you're nuts, but no. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but okay, so, okay, so, all right, so I'm, I'm, I'm starting to see the light, which is cool. So what you're saying is if, if a value isn't being honored, rather than fight that and go, okay, I am trustworthy, why are you managed? It's like go find another value with, that you could have with this person that yes. could be honored. Yes. And then suddenly your whole relationship changes. Now, does that mean that my need to be trusted is obliterated? Well, if you're interpreting it as trust, that doesn't mean, okay, they don't trust you. They may not trust themselves for all you know. Ah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is that whatever the value you feel is missing, maybe it's individuality. Maybe, boy, I like to be an individual and this person's, you know, hovering over me and it's really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so then that's the value you have to look at and say to yourself, so what can I replace with that? And I'm not saying that you do that because you want to connect with this person for life, but the happier you are where you are now. The Why more, not? Yeah. yeah you know, you, you, the, more, the more productive you're going to be. Mm -hmm. Happiness, productive, success, it all correlates. And it really comes down, I, I think the common denominator is values. Okay, so... 
you, I say I have four, you say I have billions. <laughs> <laughs> so many stars. <laughs> uh, <in the> <laughs> just too, too much to count. How do, how do you help people figure out their values? I've been doing this for a long time. I know. Okay. That's 14, why I want I want to pick your brain. Absolutely. In every conversation, there are values shared. Okay. In every sentence, it's like waves that wash over us, and in those waves are values, and we feel them, but we're not identifying them. We're not consciously identifying them. Because so, the person isn't going, one of my values is. Well, they're not telling you the values. No, you're, but you're in the listening. sentences. Yeah, if, if, if you hear somebody in an interview process, and I use this specifically for interviewing, especially you know, as the beginning, mm. that's the most important factor <laughs> in figuring out if the chemistry is going to be good before you join. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, then there are certain things that are being said. Here's one that I love to use. Okay, if I enjoy collaboration, then the more I hear us and we in the conversation, uh -huh. the more I might believe that that's one of the values that might be honored here. If somebody says, yes, we're team players, and I don't hear yes or we throughout the conversation, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's pretty simple, but you're absolutely right. If, it's, if it then becomes I, 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 or company, 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 <laughs> whatever that is, as opposed to we, yeah. And us, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're not listening for it, but we feel it. Mm. And if we feel it, you know, if we're comfortable, we're not really understanding what's making us comfortable. In, inter in the interview process, I help people discover those values so that they know how well they can connect with each person that they're meeting in the process. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about, because you say you do interview process. Talk to me a little bit about... <laughs> How I'm, suddenly I'm the interviewer, even though I need the job. <laughs> how, how, how does that work? The interview process. Well, you know, most people when they go on interviews, they're taking tests. I mean, absolutely. that's what it is. And they're going to look back a thousand years from now, <laughs> and I'm an optimist. Okay, in case you didn't know. <laughs> I can tell, yes. <laughs> I'm an optimist. I think they're going to look back and say, oh my God. These people were trained to give and take tests every day of their life. We're, we're test machines. We test everything. And here's what I've discovered. When we're in a test mentality, we're not listening as clearly to the people that we're talking to. More often, we're listening to what we want to hear or what we hope is there. And that's not a good way to interview. That's why people take years before they say, I do in a marriage. Because <laughs> they <laughs> want to be sure. And they haven't learned how to listen. Wow. So I teach people how to be more powerful in the way they listen. And I use this analogy. Picture yourself when you're in a classroom. Teacher walks in, tells you to sit down, put your p books on the floor. You're having a surprise test that's worth 50% of your grade. <gasps> Oh, no. <laughs> anxiety, no doubt. Same kind of anxiety people may have in an interview, a blind date, an RFP, I mean, on and on and on, because we're looking at the destination and we're not in the journey. Okay? We're not in the moment in the journey discovering who we're talking to. We're thinking of how do I pass or are they passing me? Okay? And so then picture that same teacher walking in asking you to put your books on the floor, and now saying, stand up, we're going on a field trip. Yay. <laughs> yeah. In a cool. field trip, you could go to the museum. You could look at the art on the wall, the colors, the brush strokes, the subject matter, and if you liked it, you'd know why. If you didn't, you'd know why as well. You can go to a concert, listen to the lyrics, the vocals, the lead guitar, stage presence. Again, if you like it, you'll know why, mm -hmm. and if you don't, you'll know why as well. So what I tell people, first, know your values, and then listen. Listen to the sentences. Listen to these waves that are coming across. What are the values that you're connecting to, and what are the ones that you're not? Now, if you're on a field trip and you're feeling uncomfortable with this person, if you're going to be working with this person, that's an excellent reason not to take the job. <laughs> you know, why would you want to put up with that? Now, there are exceptions. Well, oh, sure. If you're out of work 
and you're desperate for a job and you need the money, yeah, you're going to take a test. However, if you're listening, at least you'll know what you're stepping into and where you do connect so it's easier for you to enjoy what you're doing. I'm not even sure. I, I like what you. I like so much of what you're saying. I'm not even sure you'll be taking a test. I think it's okay to connect authentically, if you can. Um, the problem with the test, and you're, I love that you say because you're absolutely right. An interview is a test. It's like you know, am I doing this right? Did I say this? Is this the right question? Um, and and my whole thing is enjoy the journey. And, and yeah. but it's um, if you're if you're taking that test, it's like you're listening to hear. Okay, what's going to get me? The to job. this person, yeah. yeah. But, what, what but is that's going because it's a test. Yes. But if you're on a blind date and you're, you're you know, just listening from a field trip and you're not comfortable, you know, you really want to go on another one? <laughs> and no. where do you spend more of your waking hours? At Most, work. <laughs> at work. So, yeah. you know, if it could take somebody a year, two or more before they pop the question to someone to get married, you don't have that luxury in an interview. <laughs> thank, thank heavens. That will be an eternal <laughs> interview. Well, most people, maybe they get four hours of face-to-face -face time. You have to be listening powerfully or else you're going to miss a lot. And part of it is listening for values. And there's another part. The other part, the values part is how I feel being mm -hmm. with you. Right. Okay? What are the values we connect to? The other part is how much do we respect each other's way of doing the work? Wow. Yeah. And we get into that. Give me an example of that. Well, I have people ask the question, what would be my responsibilities in this position? Mm -hmm. And whatever the answer may be, um, I tell them to interject and share with them a specific example of where you've done it before or something similar to it. From inception of the responsibility, step by step by step to completion of the responsibility, like you were training them to do the job. What you're sharing with them is your thought process. Your method, yeah. How you think through the process. Mm. And only three things can happen. <laughs> One, <laughs> they tell you how they do it. Mm -hmm. And you smile because you guys do it the same way. Cool. So okay. if you like being with this person and you and they do that responsibility the same way, great chance you can live with them. The other possibility is you do it differently. And you hear how they do it and you cringe. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> and if that's the case, well, there's a good reason not to take the job. And I have what I call the 90-10 rule. Mm. The 90-10 rule is if 90% or more of what they do you respect and 10% or less you don't, as long as it's not illegal, okay, <laughs> uh, yes. then it's still worth considering the job because an A is an A. And if you're waiting for 100, you could be waiting a long time. <laughs> yeah. And the third possibility is you do it differently. And you're listening. You're like, whoa never thought of it that That's way. That's a great idea, yeah. yeah. You know, that would honor a value many people have, hunger to learn. Yeah, I was just going to say, I love, I always want to learn, yeah. so that would be so exciting. Exactly. Yeah. And so what I found is opposites often attract because of mutual respect of each other's opinion. So, you know, those are the three possibilities. There are a couple of red flags. Would you like to know the red flags? Sure. Okay. <laughs> give us everything you got. I'll give you what I can. <laughs> this interviewing stuff oh, is okay. difficult. Yeah. <laughs> red flag number one, you tell them how you do it. They tell you how they do it. You cringe, but you say to yourself, when I get here, they'll do it my way. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oof. You're setting yourself up for frustration. Oh, yes. no. <laughs> don't, don't Unless they tell you, don't think that. Okay? <laughs> and even if they tell you, be skeptical, yes. Uh, well, they <laughs> both they change all our policies just for you. They may change something, <laughs> which is that third possibility, opposites yeah. attract. But, you know, if they don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> and the other red flag, and this catches so many people. You tell them how you do it, and they smile take that smile as a, oh good, I passed that test. I gave them the right answer. And then you take the job and you find out they do it totally differently and they never told you and you can't stand it. And you sit there saying, they never told me. And I sit there saying, you they never, smiled. You <laughs> never asked. They only <laughs> smiled. <laughs> well, they smiled. And you know, people sometimes smile because they don't know how to do it. Right, right. So I tell people instead of even asking, Make a note. How do they do this? Okay. How do they do this? Because you may meet somebody in the next interview who does it every day. 
and then you'll find out whether you respect it or not. You know what's good about that process? Because I think a lot of people go in going, oh my God, I can't ask a question because I'm, I'm the expert. I'm coming here as an expert. I want to pass and I don't want people to know. So I'm just going to pretend I know what he's talking about. You know, and because uh, I'm going to pass this test. <laughs> right. And, that's, and I'm sure it gets a little, um, that's where it gets confusing. confusing. And, and people will start, you know, you've heard, I've seen so many times where people take jobs and then six months later they're unhappy because they didn't know this and they didn't know that and the job they thought was this was that and you know and I didn't know these people and I'm like well that I do believe in romancing mm -hmm. I believe in the interview romancing if you want to see somebody else see them if they don't want you to ask yourself do I really want to work here <laughs> you know I mean oh, okay that's a in, sign if, of if they don't think chemistry is that important and, and you're working on, oh, I hear you. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah. All right. Um, and if you're romancing, bring a little flower. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> bring some flowers, a little moon music, whatever. Well, you can romance. You can romance <laughs> with a story about your family if you think that family is a value that they honor and, you know, or something of that mm -hmm. nature. And that's what happens in interviews. Eventually, the good interviews, you lose all sense of time. And you start talking about personal life. And that's when you know that there's something going on. The key is to know what that something is. So, so are you saying that you, what you really want is to have an authentic conversation, really? I mean, it's, it's not a matter of, you want to hit the points, you want to listen to what they're saying and answer, but you want to answer based on values, your values. Yeah, well, yeah, you want to, well, you want to know what values they have that interact with yours mm -hmm. and which ones that don't. I mean, no one's going to have all your values. I mean, that's impossible. That's nirvana. Yeah. yeah. But and they'd be, they'd you get know, on your nerves with, after you know, a while. You know <laughs> where not to go with certain people, okay? Mm -hmm. We know that already. But right. we don't, you know, we only know it from, like, getting hit over the head too many times. I'm suggesting you don't get hit over the head. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> suggesting you know right up in the Wear front. a helmet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your helmet are your values, okay? Uh, there you go. Listen, we got 45 seconds. Do you Ooh. believe that? Wow. Um, so I'm tell sad. people, if they want to learn more about values and chemistry based um, or chemistry factor and how can they where can they find you uh, well you can go to my website www.lifebalancerecruiting right on the bottom there dot com or you can email me mm. b cool. feinberg f e i n b e r g at the t h e k a y g r o u p dot com okay. uh, there's also a new website coming up called the chemistry factor Ah, <laughs> and a book in the works, but we won't talk about that. I can, I can only say how thrilled I am that we finally got to do this, and that um, I thank you for coming in and sharing all this knowledge. Thank